Skip Sabian said, I look forward to seeing that. Nick, I look forward to seeing you and everybody in this segment walking out the door for the last time never to be seen again. <laughs> I'm liking the women's division, especially New Japan, because now um, they're getting actual firepower. Plus, plus they're actually wrestling. Actually. Best friends still employed. Troy Perretta still employed. Chuck Taylor still employed. Dan Housen still fucking employed. Get him out of here. This is ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous is this. This is. Where is the logic in this? Where is the logic? So, somebody find it, and when you find it, give it to Tony Khan! Let's open Radio Rock Break. Hey guys, Khabanate here, and today we're with another episode of Life's Opening Radio Rope Break uh, and today um, we're going to review uh, some n- more New Japan uh, we're going to review uh, New Japan Battle in the Valley um, and as you can see uh, my background image has changed I'm not in much of a valley um, yeah uh, this took place uh, before we talk about that um, uh, ben, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. A pleasant afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. Yes, this is me. I'm Ben. Um, last episode, I was barely on the show, but thank you all for the incredibly positive support for the show. Considering Josh was on the show, he had the he had literally had to hold down the fort. But um, anyway, I mean. Shin Cabo did pretty well on that review, so I would say, yeah. But thank you all for the incredible support over the past couple of weeks about the Elimination Chamber review. Go check that out. If you haven't checked it out, check out the Royal Rumble review and all that stuff. Yeah. And I still need to um, upload the roundup, uh, which you sent me on Tuesday already. So you may need to send me again after this so that I can... Maybe edit it. Nah, I think I'll edit it tomorrow and release it the uh, same day as this. Um, I don't know if I'll render this on uh, now. Um, probably not. Maybe. Uh, but we'll, we will see. And um, certified bangers, we have a surprise host. Uh, we will not disclose his name. Um, but yeah, it's not me because I've been very busy this weekend. Uh, so yeah, you'll find out who your surprise host is. Um, he's kind of hiding in plain sight. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now enough about that. Let's not spoil it anymore. And let's start with this review. Um, this is New Japan Pro Wrestling Battle in the Valley, which took place in the San Jose Civic Center in San Jose, California, which of course is in the United States of America, and that took place on the same night as the Elimination Chamber, and that was Saturday, the 18th of February, 2023. And the first match, we have an eight-man tag team match between uh, Kushida, who used to be in NXT, DKC, Kevin Knight, and Volador Jr. versus. The Impact Wrestling World Champion Josh Alexander, who I hear is a pretty good wrestler. Um, Adrian Quest, Mascara Dorada, uh, formerly known as Lince Dorado. And uh, CMLL World Welterweight Champion Rocky Romero. Um, It's Josh and Josh Alexander and um, who's that? KU. Kushida is starting. Uh, They do some technical wrestling they do stereo angle locks Kevin Knight makes a tag Adrian Quest tags in Kevin does an arm drag he does a single leg pick Quest uh, did a spinning crossbody which was nice he did a hurricane runner and a drop kick for a two count Uh, Rocky Romero and Volador um, tagged in simultaneously and then Rocky escaped the ring um, he was dubbed the King of Sneaky Style by a commentary, which I believe was Ian Riccoboni and um, Matt something, who used to be Aiden English 
in WWE. Ben, can you confirm or deny? Okay, uh, Ben is a bit unresponsive. Uh, so I will confirm or not uh, that later. Um, I was confused here if uh, Dorada made a tag. Um, well, anyways, they did a leapfrog. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, you lagged on my end, Cabo. Oh, oh, I was lagged. So what? So who was the commentary? Was it Ian Riccaboni? I think it might have been, because I did hear someone say Ian. Yes, it was. Ian. Was he? It was Ian Riccaboni, and I believe Alex Kozlov. I believe. Oh, really? Damn, yes, Alex Kozlov. Ian. And what? Wasn't Aiden English there? He used to be Aiden English in WWE. I don't know his name now. Yeah, I think Matt Renwald was on the show as oh, well. Oh, yes, Matt. I don't know if he was a backstage guy or what, but um, he, he was I, on the he show. He was I there that. on commentary. He They did pan to him. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, I was confused here. Dorado made a tag. Um, anyways, they did a leapfrog. Uh, Volador did a hurricane runner, Dorada did a big boot, um, and then a bulldog, then he did a nice drop kick. Rocky Romero tagged back in, he stomped on Volador, uh, Dorado stops him. Um, Volador did a hurricane runner on Dorado, um, did a super kick on Rocky Romero, DKC tagged in, uh, Volador sent Rocky Romero back in the ring. And then DKC did some kicks. Kushida tagged in. They did a double team. Uh, Josh Alexander tagged. He did a night Northern Light suplex for a two count. Uh, put in an ankle lock. Jumped on the angle, ankle. Um, Adrian Quest tagged in. He worked on the bad leg. Uh, Dorada made a tag. He stomped on Kushida. Mock kicked him. He beat him up. Then Rocky Romero made a tag. He did a stiff chop to Kushida in the corner. Um, he did a two ever in the other corner. Um, Kushida did a handspring back elbow on uh, Rocky, Romero, Rocky Romero and Adrian Quest. DKC made a cold tag. Dorada came in illegally. Uh, DKC took him down. Uh, he did chops on Adrian Quest and Dorado. Um, did a double drop kick. He dived on um, Quest and Dorado. Uh, they got back in the ring. Did a dive kick on Adrian Quest for a two count. I'm not sure who was that. DKC, I guess. And then, then there was multiple men in the ring, uh, which always annoys me. Uh, and then um, Kushida and Kevin Knight hit back to future. Um, tries to go for the pin, but then Josh Alexander breaks it up. He went for uh, DKC. V Volado did a hurricane run on Rocky Romero. Um, did a sent on to the outside. Did multiple dive, and then yeah, th it just started to get all crazy. And I, I skipped the rest of the match. And then Kushida's team won. I gave Wrestling a five and Logic two. What did you think about this match, Ben? Um, this was a good match. Um, this was an interesting... Why was this on the show was my question. I don't mind eight-man tags opening the show, but Josh Alexander versus Kushida, I actually would have been fine with this. Would have been fine with that match alone, just being on the show. I don't understand why this was an eight-man tag. Yeah. I get why... I get why Kushida is training the LA Dojo guys, which is which is cool to me, which is fine. I got no problem, but Josh Alexander is on the other side of the ring. Uh, Rocky Romero is on the other side of the ring. So pretty much two champions lost in the same exact match at the same exact time. Why? May I please ask whoever is booking New Japan, you need to reevaluate New Japan's booking cuz some of the booking for New Japan is absolutely sickening. I don't know what is going on over there. You have two champions on the other side of the ring losing for for, for what? For fucking Kushida? The fuck are you kidding me? Why? It makes no sense. Yeah, and Josh But I gave this match. 
Josh Jenkins would have hated that because uh, he is no big fan of champions losing, and I see neither are you, Ben. Um, no, it's not. I mean, I don't. I, it has to have a reason, you know. Like it can't have. It can't happen on circumstance, you know. On a random, on this random first match on this big time show. This was a very good show, Battle in the Valley. Very yeah, good show. Yeah. But, I don't know why was this opening the show. You know, Josh Alexander should have won this match. I don't know why he didn't win this match, but it is what it is. I gave this match, I gave, I gave this match a five and a half. At least they tried to put on a decent eight-man tag. It's not like it was, you know, top flight. You know, holding on, not holding on to the tag ropes and fucking blind tagging like this and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that that was that. Um, and now we have for the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship match, Fred Rosser, the champion formerly known as Darren Young in WWE versus Kenta, formerly known in WWE as Hideo Itami. Um, Kenta comes to the ring followed by Fred Rosser uh, to start the match and then they, lock, they locked up a uh, rope break. Um, Kenta put in a waist lock, got a rope break. He slapped uh, Fred in the back of the head. Uh, he's bald, by the way, Fred Rosser. Uh, him, which is quite different. If you watched him in WWE, he had a head full of hair. Um, and speaking of hair, um, Ben here cut his hair and his stash. Um, so, yeah, uh, he may look a bit different today. Um, and as to I, I, I shaved... Uh, my mustache you can't really see it anyway but I did shave it because uh, um, and the teachers didn't even know it's because at school I'm not really supposed to have uh, anything of a beard or even a mustache so um, yeah I have to we have to stay clean shaven because you know we have school uniforms and stuff like that so yeah uh, the teachers didn't even notice but I, I still shave it anyway just in case um, cause yeah, they do come down on your ass, uh, pretty hard, uh, if you don't wear your uniform properly. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to this match. Um, Kenta slapped Fred Ross in the back of his head, gave him some stomp, gave him some mock kicks cause he's a heel. Uh, then, uh. Fred Russell went to the crowd and he challenged Kenta to come into the crowd. I didn't really like that. Um, and yeah, I said here, the ref was very lenient. I don't think it was Rick Knox. I would have noticed. Uh, but yeah, the ref was very lenient. He was the was referee I, in this match. I don't even know. I didn't, I didn't pay attention. But he wasn't even counting. If he was, he was counting slow. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's a oh he's a nominee already. Yeah. Get off my TV referee yeah. of the month. He's already yeah. nominated. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that we'll, later. We'll get to those. Uh, wait, ooh, one of the nominees was on this show. Uh, oh, Lord. Somehow. Uh, and yeah, they fight on the apron. Kenta did a DDT on the apron. They got finally got back in the ring. Kenta did some kicks, snap mid takeover, then he did a PK to Fred Ross's back for a two count, did some knee uh, knee drops, and then the last one, he kicked him in the head, did a DDT for a two count, twisting neck breaker for a two count, side headlock, and then Fred Ross made a comeback, he beat up Kenta in the corner, did a hip attack, it's not every day you see a man doing that. Uh, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not trying to be sexist or nothing, but yeah. Uh, by the way, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, did two leg drops for a two count. Kenta did a DDT. I did an avalanche clothesline for a two count. They struggled on the apron. Then Kenta did a back suplex on the apron, which is uh, it's not even a back suplex. He went like this, and then he he turned around, and then boom, uh, yeah, slammed him on the apron. Um, he did a leg drop at ringside. They got back in the ring. He did a nice lariat for a two count. 
Um, Kenta put in the game over. Um, uh, Fred Ross got a rope break. Kenta uh, kicked Fred Ross in the spine and the head. Did a draping DDT. Uh, did some stiff kicks in the corner. Did a coup de gras for a two count. Fred put in the chicken wing. Um, Kenta dragged ref to break the hold. They had a one-two exchange. Uh, Kenta did some open hand slaps to the neck. Uh, Fred did a rolling forearm for a two count. And then Kenta grabbed the ref again. And then we had a ref bump. Uh, Fred put in the STF with a chicken wing. Um, Kenta tapped. But there was no ref to make a decision. To um, count the, um, the submission. And then Juice Robinson, who's still employed, get off my TV. Bro asked for two title shots and lost both of them. He threw a roll of coins at Fred Rosser. And then uh, Kenta hit a go to sleep to become the new strong openweight champion. I gave Rasslin a 7 and Logic a 6. I thought this was a decent match, despite all some of the weird shit that happened. Um, Juice Robinson, who's still employed, coming out to the ring. They fought on the outside. The ref didn't even count. Uh, but, yeah, it was what it was. What did you think about this match, Ben? I gave this match a six and a half, and Logic, I gave it a four. I got to talk about this goddamn finish. Juice Robinson coming down with fucking coins to the ring. Who wrote that shit? The fuck was that? I like Juice Robinson actually. I mean, I don't. I never really had like, like his gimmick is terrible, really. But I mean, he's not El Fantasma, who's a fucking goon, by the way. But yeah, but I don't understand why Juice Robinson had to come down with a roll of goddamn. Quarters. They look like quarters. They weren't. I thought they were dimes at first. I thought no, those were a roll of quarters. And then all of a sudden he hits De uh, Fred Rosier with it. Then Kenta beats him. So this is pretty much typical Bullet Club booking in New Japan. Why? Why did Juice Robinson have to come down to the ring with a fucking roll of goddamn quarters? For what? What? What, what else? What he's gonna come down with? Nickels? Pennies? Half dollars? The fuck was? What? What else? Terrible finish. That referee needs to be suspended. I don't know who the hell that was. He didn't count for shit. He needs to be suspended. On site. Okay, then. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Next match. Maybe something that you won't rage as much at. <laughs> um, for the New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team Championship, Impact World, Cha World Tag Team Champions... Motor City Machine Guns, uh, consisting of Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, who are the strong openweight tag team champions, versus West Coast Wrecking Crew, consisting of Joral Nelson and Royce Isaacs. Um, this was a good match. Yeah. The Wrecking Crew jumped the uh, Motor City before the bell. Uh, Joral Nelson made a mysterious hand gesture. Uh, the Wrecking Crew uh, did stereo vertical suplexes. They taunted. Joel uh, did an uppercut. And then uh, Royce did, made a tag. Uh, did a double team on Alex Shelley for one count. Uh, Royce did elbows to the chest for one count. Joel made a tag. Double team for a two count. Joel put in the cross face. But then Alex escaped. And then Joel did a nice drop kick. Saban pushed Joral off the turnbuckle and Royce made a tag, Lari attempted a lariat but then um, Alex hit a flatliner in the corner. Saban made a cold tag, he ended with a crossbody on Joral Nelson for a two count. Chris Saban did a dive, the people chanted Motor City. The Motor City did a flatliner drop kick combination on Joel Nelson for a two count, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, uh, Chris Saban accidentally gave Alex Shelley a hell of a kick. Um, Joel botched a coup de gras on Alex Shelley. Uh, Roy hit a Royce 
Kele Spicoli, driver on Sabin on Joel Nelson's knees for a two count. The wrecking crew um, did stereo Germans with a release. Roy uh, put in a full Nelson uh, into a German on Sabin, which was nice. Joel Nelson hit a cutter on Sabin for a near fall, um, but then Alex broke the pin. And just give me a second, uh, Ben. Um, Alex Shelley did a cutter on Joel Nelson, and then uh, Motor City hit a dirt bomb for the win to retain the belts. I gave Raslin uh, Rhodes here a 6.5, but I'll give it a 7 and Logic a 5. Uh, what did you think about this match, Ben? Um, I thought this was a good match. It was a hell of a match. I thought this I thought this may be one of the sleeper matches on this show. I thought this was a very solid match. This is a this is a dark horse match. Go check this match out. But um um I gotta talk about something real fast. Uh you mentioned that um Joel Nelson botched a foot stomp. Yeah. How the fuck do you botch a foot stomp? How? Well like, how did it happen? Like did he break did he roll his ankle? Did he like what did he hit any did he hit his arm did he hit his what what i don't know i don't know what you mean by that i think um because he missed or something um oh well I, you... yeah oh well, maybe i should say he missed a coup de gras i'm not sure uh double okay i'm just checking for it yeah how the fuck you bought your foot stop jesus christ <laughs> well that's you terrible can't, you can't that's really like watching the clothesline <laughs> Okay, my bad. Uh, miscon miscommunication on my part. I was just writing down as it happened. Um, I won't judge you. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, and then now, a loser leaves New Japan match. Um, Eddie Kingston versus Jay White. I'm wondering, where is Eddie Kingston on AEW? We haven't seen him since what? December or even before I don't know the last time he was on AEW um Eddie Kingston was on Dynamite uh, this week oh yeah I he think said that. yeah had the uh Revolution ladder match which I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Dynamite very briefly uh before we go to our next match okay so Eddie Kingston and our so Eddie Kingston was in the face of the Revolution ladder match which was on Dynamite which was not on the buy-in of the revolution. I don't understand why. So Eddie Kingston, after this, he says, and I quote, I quit AEW. No explanation. I'm out. Peace. There's no explanation for Eddie Kingston. You can tell this is legitimately a work because like Eddie Kingston just doesn't, Eddie Kingston, a guy like him, he doesn't quit very easily, especially, I mean, I, I, I know why he quit. I know why he quit because he's been booked horribly for the last nine months. Jesus Christ! I mean, dude hasn't even been on TV. Dude was fighting the House of Black for no reason. I might add. What the fuck was the House of Black doing? And also, I know I know why the House of Black got a title shot at Revolution, which we will review next week. But again, this is ridiculous. Why? Hey, Eddie Kingston was on the show and he had a good match, so I can't take nothing away from him. But. I don't know why AEW is just not booking Eddie Kingston right. What's going on? Yeah. They even booked their fucking tag team division right. So why did... It's just, it's just stupid. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but, yeah. Um, now they choose to ban Bullet Club, and, and they didn't do that for the last match that a Bullet Club member was part of. And they had Juice Robinson, who's still employed, come here. And throw a roll of coins at Fred Rosser. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Fucking horrible decision. Who wrote that shit? Who booked that garbage? Je Jesus Christ. That's worse than Raw. Fuck mm. out of here. Raw was terrible this week. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Yeah. Terrible show. Hey, yo. <laughs> oh, I, that, that. And speaking of get, on my, uh, get off my TV, Rick Knox. Was the referee, <laughs> and here we can talk about the nominees. <laughs> We're gonna reveal for the very first time, get off my TV, the worst referees all month. This is for the month of February. Here are all the nominees at this time: Rick Knox, Stephon Smith, Paul Turner, Rod Zapata. 
Bryce Remsburg, all five of these referees, the winner of this award. Drum roll, please. All right, your winner is Rick Knox. Get the <laughs> fuck off our TV. <laughs> the referee of the month. <laughs> Stinks. Oh. All right, then. Uh, well, that's, Congratulations, Nick Knox. That's going to be a recurring segment on Rope Break. <laughs> yeah, and he was in two matches tonight. This one oh, and another fuck. one. Fuck. Anyway, ba back to this match. Loser leaves New Japan. Eddie Kingston versus Jay White. And Bullet Club was banned from ringside. The people chanted Eddie... Um, and uh, as I said, there where's him? Where is he on AEW? And now he's quit AEW. Uh, and then Jay White taunted Eddie. Uh, he left the ring. Eddie did a chop. Um, Jay White left the ring again. They got back in the ring. Um, they locked up. Rope break. Uh, Jay White did a chop. Stomps in the corner. Shoulder rams in the corner. Chop. Eddie did. It. Eddie did a urinagi. I uh, did some headbutts, a chop, he standed on Jay White's abdomen, did a clubbing blow, chop to the back, he taunted Jay White, did a nasty chop, another one, um, Jay White did a small comeback, did a DDT, they laid down selling, Jay White did an uppercut in the corner, underhook suplex, and then did a standing something suplex for a two count, I didn't I wasn't sure what they said. Um, um, Jay White tried to gouge Eddie's eyeball out. Uh, Eddie did an exploder. Lariat for a two count. Eddie did six chops. The two men butted heads. Eddie uh, did a chop and Jay White fell to ringside. The people chanted Eddie. Um, they got back in the ring. Eddie did some chops, some more chops in the corner, even more chops. Jay White did a flatliner, did a deadlift German, lariat for a near fall, did a urinagi for a two count, rear naked choke, chops on Eddie Kingston in the corner. Eddie did some chops. Jay White did, did a chop. They exchanged chops. Um, Eddie did kabashi chops in the corner, those barrage of chops. Um... And then Jay White did barrage of chops. Um, Jay White again tried to gouge the eyes. Did a half and half suplex. Uh, tried to go uh, for a Blade Runner. But then Eddie went for the eyes. Um, he put hands on um, Rick Knox. Which I will excuse in this case. Which we will both excuse in this case. Because uh, it's Rick Knox. And yeah. Um, Jay White... Uh, tried to do a blade one. Oh, Jade White did a blade runner, but then Eddie left ring. Um, he got back in the ring. Then uh, uh, Jay White tried to try to pin him uh, and got a two count. And then uh, again, Jay White put the hands on Rick Knox. Eddie did a back fist for a two count. He offered um, the fist to Jay White. Uh, Jay White declined and he spit at Eddie Kingston. Then Eddie did two back fists. Um, he did a half and half suplex. And then did another back fist. He did a Northern Lights driver for a near fall, which was nice. And then um, uh, he said, uh, the commentary said that no one except Jun Akiyama has kicked out of the Northern Lights driver. And now Jay White joins that list. Um, he hugged Jay White and then um, did a Northern Lights driver for the win. Um, this was a pretty decent match. And now Jay White is a free agent. Um, he, his contract has expired with New Japan. So who knows where he could go. AEW, WWE, Impact. There's so many places that he could go. So it'd be very interesting. Uh, so he ain't going to impact. <laughs> <laughs> impact. <laughs> well, I, it's up to him. He, I don't recommend impact either. But um, 
<laughs> it's his choice at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to Impact, Jay White. You're better off in WWE, bro. Uh, You're better off in WWE. Okay, then. AEW, they got too much shit going on. Plus, in AEW, Jay White would be booked like a goon anyway. So, he'll be better in WWE. I wouldn't yeah. mind him in NXT, actually. I wouldn't uh, mind him. He'll be cool. Okay. Yeah, maybe that get some... Breaking? Maybe finally get some star power in that brand, because my goodness. That... that <laughs> Terrible. Nobody wants to watch that. Oh, Booker T on commentary on NXT? Fuck. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's awful on commentary. Jesus. Fucking Christ. Anyway, uh, this match, Eddie versus Jay White. I gave this match a 7.5. Uh, I gave logic for this match. I gave it a 5. And the reason why it's a 5 and not a 7 is because of the fucking... Uh, referee stuff i was like what like, what's going on i know you arguing like it's one thing to argue with the count but it's another thing to grab the referee if you grab the referee by the shirt that's a that's a dq immediately that should be a dq every that's, that should be a dq in every shape and form i don't know why the real i don't know why the wrestling rule book is like that like yeah you can grab a referee but you can't punch the referee grabbing is essentially threatening the referee that's, that's, that's a DQ right there. That's assault of a referee. Either way, if you punch him, you kick him, you grab him, uh, you try to gouge his eyes out, you, you point a gun at him, yeah, that's assault. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You, uh, I'll get it. This was a good match. Uh, you order a like missile strike on his you. ass, that's assault of a referee. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that last part, but uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, good match though. Yeah. Jay um, White in WWE, take my money. All right then. Uh, yeah, I think I'll also give this match um, wrestling seven, logic six, and yeah. Now, um, uh, before the end of this match, uh, David David Finley attacked Jay White. He cut a promo, um, and then he said. You had this company by the balls, and you let it go. I would kill for what Jay White has. And then he said, fuck California. And then people chanted, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the, clearly, New David Japan. Finley, David, Finley remind, <laughs> David Finley reminded me of his dad every week. <laughs> My name is Finley, and I love to fight. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of him every time. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants to beat people up, and actually he has logical reasons behind beating people up. Finley just beat the shit out of everybody. But now David Finley has logic behind it, and um, yeah, this was cool. David Finley needs to win a championship in 2023. I don't know. What are y'all doing with David Finley? I know he was a tag team champion. I know he was, I believe he was never open weight champion, if I'm not mistaken, as well. No, never weight six-man champion. This dude needs to be U.S. champion by the end of 2023. I'm putting my money on David Finley to win the U.S. title in, two, in 2023. I don't know what y'all doing with David Finley. Yeah. Um, He's too man. good. And clearly, New Japan is not PG. Um, and, yeah, he sent a warning to the locker room. And, yeah. Um, and now... To the next fat, the next match, which was a filthy rules fight between Homicide and Tom Lawler. Uh, no ropes. Unfortunately, that brings back deja vu of um, a certain segment, which we will not talk about. Uh, if you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. Ask somebody, but we ain't gonna tell you what it was. Because we'd rather forget oh, about it. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Road dog sucks. That person might have been involved with said segment, which we will not <laughs> mention. So, but, yeah. Um, anyways, um, Homicide attacked Tom from the back. Uh, pin for a two count. Uh, Tom Lawler did a PK. Uh, they fought on the outside. Tom beat Homicide 
with a trash can and a steel chair. They got back in the ring. Homicide did a Northern Light suplex for a two count. He shot Tom into the ring post. Beat Tom with baking sheets. Uh, what, what are baking sheets doing there? <laughs> did an elbow. Did a DDT. Took out a ladder. He beat Tom with a kendo stick. Took forks out of the ring. Where do they get this catering? Has Titus Catering come to New Japan or something? Probably. Um, must have got it from. Um, they must have got it from AEW with all their fucking guys in catering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Some of their guys have been on fucking TV. They've been eating uh, red velvet cake in the back for fucking six months. Where the fuck has fucking the butcher and the blade been? The fuck have they been catering? Jesus yeah, Christ. where's yeah. Serena D been? Haven't seen her Where? since. What forbidden door? Oh, all October. out. That was the last time she was on TV. It was October. Yeah. Sure, it was October. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, who was this? Homicide took out folks. Uh, Tom did a clover leaf, sitting clover leaf, not like Rhea Ripley's clover leaf, um, uh, who. We Ben may talk about on the roundup. Uh, who we will eventually talk about next time we do a WWE show, and she's on there. Um, <coughs> Homicide stabs uh, Tom Lawler with the fork, which was pretty insane. Uh, did a cutter for a two count. Tried to shoot Tom into the ring post again, but then Tom reversed and shoot and shot him into the ring post. Tom Lawler did a dive and then he did the worst chair shot I've ever seen at the apron. He beat Homicide with silver knuckles. Looks like a, one of those buckles that you put on in the airplane. Uh, that was what the silver knuckle looked, or looked like any kind of belt with that silver buckle on it. Um, yeah, anyway... Um, he he took the hook of the turnbuckle and did this ah uh, by his mouth and which was pretty nasty uh, and all that germs on that turnbuckle and then ah uh, just hygiene 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 uh, he missed a Superman punch and hit the ring post probably fucked up his hand I know for that um, homicide threw a chair at Tom Lawler. Uh, his hand is bleeding, of course, because he <coughs> <coughs> his ass tried to do a Superman punch and it hit the ring post. So of course, it's gonna bleed. Um, he took out a door, and even the commentators didn't have. Was there what? What's that segment? Ding dong, hello on New Japan that we didn't know about, and that that door was sitting under the ring. Like, what was that door even doing there? <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know why everybody going through doors. This is an indie wrestling kind of thing. What the? Why are we, go, why are we putting people through doors? I, I do realize the doors. The doors barely break. Yeah, the not door didn't break. even break. So what was <laughs> the point? Fuck. Fuck. Oh, uh. Jesus Christ. Anyways, uh, they got back in the ring. Um, Homicide smashed Tom Lawler with the dustbin, uh, metal trash can. Um, Tom Lawler slammed Homicide through the, on top of the dustbin for a two count. Homicide did two amigos. Uh, Tom Lawler did some suplexes. They exchanged suplexes. Then Tom Lawler hit a uh, insiguri. Rear naked choke, homicide escaped, did a Spicoli driver on the door. They laid down selling, the people chanted, holy shit, holy shit. And then um, they replayed that spot. Um, homicide did a package pile driver on the broken door, the half door, so it did break, my bad. Um, Tom Lawler did a back body, back body drop on the ladder. He threw the chair at the ho homicide. 
did the nasty PK for two count. Oh, not really nasty. Um, fancy, let's say, um, PK for two count. Uh, he smashed Homicide with the half door. He put a chair on top of Homicide's face. Uh, did a flying headbutt uh, uh, off the ladder. And he no sold that shit and immediately went for the pin. Got a two count. So they both no sold. Put in the rear naked choke. Tom Lawler did. Um, homicide flipped off Tom Lawler on or the referee. Then he passed off, passed out, and Tom won. Uh, this wasn't that bad, but the no selling kind of took off a few points. Um, I gave Rasson. I said they originally eight. I'll give it um, seven. And logic of six. What did you think about this match, Ben? I thought this was fine. Uh, this was a good in between match. Like you know, there's a lot of t there's a lot of title matches on this show. So in between all that, we have a we have a street fight essentially. And I thought this was okay. I didn't think this was like a um, a very good street fight. I, this was not a good street fight, but I mean, hey, at least there's variety on this show at least. And um, ha homicide. And Tom Lawler actually put on a solid match. I got no complaints about it. You know, you know I, the door spots were kind of stupid. You know, it, I, I don't mind it. I didn't mind it as much as I did, like, you know, in, in, in different matches. I didn't mind it here. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want to rewatch this again, though. Oh, ah, okay. That That's cool. Um and now uh, we go to the, the next match for the World Television Championship. Zack Sabre Jr., the championship versus Clark Connors. We watched it. We watched Clark. Good. We watched Clark Connors on uh, on uh, Forbidden Door back in June, July. Mm -hmm. He was pretty good. And this um, is a 15 minute time limit match. match. And nice. guess who was the referee? Stephon Smith. Nope. Nuts. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why was Rick Knox on this show? Oh, fuck. Rick Knox off TV. Him and Stephon Smith. Fuck him. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Jeez. All right. This was a good match, though. Yeah. Nuts. yeah, yeah, it was still pretty decent. And uh, the kind of sad thing is that um, Zack Saber Jr. didn't really have his funny um, grunts uh, that he did <laughs> the last time we reviewed his <laughs> match um, at Wrestle Kingdom. It was him versus Ren Narita, and the one movie did he went Narita. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he that was, was more serious in this match. Yeah, it was a bit more, more serious in this match. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like, I love it. I, Zack Sabre Jr. is a great heel, and he's actually funny. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, and even uh, at the Wrestle Kingdom, I think it was Carl Anderson. He he um, he announced his move. Before he did it, um, I, so he did something like backbreaker, boom, and Kenny Omega also did that. I, I think he was the one who said backbreaker, boom, uh, him with Will Ospreay, which um, surprisingly was a decent match. It was a good match. Um, hey, yeah, um, considering I've I've given both of them zero ratings before. Um, yeah, it was still a decent match. A lot of V triggers and Oz cutters and whatever, and hidden blades, especially. But yeah, it was still a fine match. <coughs> um, now uh, we go to this match Zack Sabre Jr. versus Clark Connors. Um, had technical wrestling, uh, they exchanged uppercuts. Um, who is it? This guy, Clark Connors, did chops in the corner. Uh, they exchanged shoulder tackles. Clark Connors did two chops in the corner, did another chop. Zack Sabre Jr. did an uppercut. 
Uh, and then um, Claw Connors did a chop. Zack Sabre Jr. put in a Cobra twist. Um, Claw Connors did an arm drag. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. twisted the neck. Put in the neck vice. Uh, did a snap and twist. Putting in random holes, which he did a lot of. Um, got, uh, Clark Connors got a rope break. He taunted Clark Connors. Mock kicked him. Um, <coughs> Clark Connors did some chops. Zack Sabre Jr. knocked him down. He worked on Clark Connors' wrist. Uh, got a rope break. Clark Connors did the pounce. Um, it, kind of, it was kind of weird. Um, did a running back elbow in the corner. I uh, did a spear in the other corner. Zack Sabre Jr. put in a guillotine. Um, then from that, Clark Connors hit a northern light suplex, which is nice. Then he did a PK for a two count. Zack Sabre Jr. Um, you know, did this like way he would grab the wrist and then boom throw you on the floor um i'm not sure what that was called i just said a wrist lock throw i'm not sure ben what you call it it doesn't seem like he has an idea either um I, well the, i have a good idea it, i I'll, I'll call it a wrist lock slam let's just say that yeah uh <laughs> i was also thinking that and as he did that uh, he said fuck off and then um and then people like oh and he was like we're not pg Fuck off and watch the other show. And then um, Clark Connors did two forearms. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. did an uppercut. Um, did another for and then another forearm from Clark Connors. And then another uppercut from Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. did the Pele kick to the uh, wrist. Did a German suplex. Clark, Clark Connors did a... Um, I almost said Crow Connors. Um, Clark Connors did a um, shoulder tackle. Did a brain buster for a two count. Zack Sabre Jr. did a kick. Uh, put in rings of Sabre. Switch to the neck vice. Switch to the single leg crab, which was nice. Um, Clark Connors got a rope break. He blocked the PK from Zack Sabre Jr. Um, did a headbutt. Zack Sabre Jr. did a full Nelson suplex with a bridge for a two count, which was nice. Um, did four kicks. Clark Connors did a spear scoop slam for a two count. Zack Sabre Jr. Um, manipulated the finger. He made like Pete uh, Dunn or Butch, as they like to call him. Um, Clark Connors did a power bomb for a two count. Rear naked choke. Um, Clark Connors uh, tried to do a power bomb, but then um, Zack Sabre Jr. countered with a um, triangle, um, and it Clark Connors reversed with an ankle lock. And then at that time, um, there was one minute left of the match. Then um, Zack Sabre Jr. hit a Fujiwara armbar for the win. And, um, yeah, I think I saw I th that match at Forbidden Door was a lot better uh, by Clark Connors than this match. I, he could have done a lot better in this match. But um, it was basically Zack Sabre Jr. dominating and asserting himself and his title reign, which was good. Um, and, yeah, um, Zack Sabre Jr. walked up the ramp. He met meeted Kevin Knight who seemed to challenge him and then he said what do you think of this moron and um, I see I guess it's the next title match uh, of Zack Sabre Jr. which I wish him the best of luck if we watch that match or not if that's on the next New Japan pay-per-view but anyway I gave this wrestling the 8 and Logica 7 what did you think about this match Ben I gave the same exact rating you did <coughs> Wrestling 8, Logic 7. This match was great. It was awesome. And um, uh, th there was an actual story, just like the Wrestle, uh, the Wrestle Kingdom match with um, Ren Narita. Except the Ren Narita and Zack Sabre Jr. match was way better than this match. Way better than this match. But um, I thought Clark Connors did okay for himself. You know, he did a couple moves that were 
that were nice, you know, yeah. no big deal. But this yeah. wasn't Zach Zebra Jr. You know, this was a Zach Zebra Jr. win, bro. All the way, Zach Zebra Jr. He needs to go a year with that TV title. If he doesn't go a year, he needs to be either a never open weight champion or something like that. But just you know, but Zach Zebra Jr. is awesome, bro. This was a good match. I got no complaints about this match. None. Probably except Rick Knox being the referee. But that, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only issue we have is this match. And I guess the <laughs> fact that he didn't ha have any special grunts or nothing like that. Um, but, yeah. It was a lot um, more serious. Yeah. Seri a, a serious Zack Sabre Jr. is a great Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that That's was that fine. Meant. I'm not mad at that. I was just... Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I just wanted that for a bit of amusement because it's actually pretty funny. Um, and then, oh, oh, his next match. Oh, man. Yo. Oh, it was good. Oh, oh this was a great <laughs> match. This was a great match. Mm, the, Jesus. The first part of the double main event for the IWGP Women's Championship. Kyrie, the champion, versus Mercedes Monet, uh, who um, who was Sasha Banks, if you didn't know. Um, the people chanted, Mercedes, Mercedes. And then uh, people chanted uh, Kyrie as well. Uh, they locked up, uh, rope break, uh, Monet put in a wrist lock, uh, side head lock, um, arm drag, and then put in the bank statement for a bit. Um, she retreated. Uh, the people tried it CEO. Um, she put in a Roman knuckle lock, side head lock. Uh, Kyrie did a flying head scissors, then a drop kick, sent Mer Mercedes on the outside. Uh, did a jumping clothesline at ringside. They got back in the ring. Kyrie with the best chops I've seen all night, and there were a hell of a lot of chops on this show. And she did the best of them all. Well done, Kyrie. Um, Mercedes did an arm drag, did a double knees in the corner for a two count. Uh, she was really working on the wrist throughout this match. Uh, Kyrie put her in the tree of woe, kicked her in the corner. Um, <coughs> Mercedes did a stunner on the turnbuckle, uh, and which was pr quite brutal. They fought on the outside, slammed Kyrie on the ring post, they got back in the ring. Um, uh, and Mercedes went for the pin, uh, got a two count, she taunted, Kyrie then slapped her, um, did a single arm DDT for a two count, arm bar, she focused on Kyrie's bad arm, um, Kyrie rolled her up for a two count, Mercedes choked Kyrie on the rope, then she stood on her shoulders, um, Kyrie retreated to the outside, they got back in the ring. Uh, she got back in the ring. And then Mercedes again was working on the bad arm. Um, <coughs> she went for the pin. Got a two count. Uh, she put Kyrie in the tree of woe again. Choked her. Tried to smash Kyrie's arm into the ring post. But then Kyrie reversed. Then uh, Kyrie shot Mer Mercedes into the ring post. Tried to do it again. But then... Um, Mercedes reversed. They laid down selling and they almost both got counted out. And and the guy that was counting, he was gradually getting louder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18 and yeah um that was nice that he did that um that was awesome that was yeah. great yeah whoever that referee is round of applause at, at this time round of applause that was awesome third your dominance that's what a referee should do yeah uh, it was stefan smith and rick knox can take lessons oh, fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> okay let's not disturb the hype of this match with those goons um, and, Ky and they got back in the ring. Mercedes was exploding the bad arm once again. Kyrie put her in the tree of woe again. 
um, did a double foot stomp, which was nice. Did a rolling neck breaker and then a spear, which was also nice. She hyped herself up. And then, well, it was not like the last women's match that was on Wrestle Kingdom, but I was screaming, like, yeah, and that, all that stuff. Well, they were screaming their brains out that they would have their flipping intestines all over the ring. Um, and uh, she did a base, Kyrie did a baseball slide for him, did an avalanche for him for a two count. Um, she did a snap mirror, put in the figure four. Uh, the people did alternating, let's go, Monet, um, chants. Um, uh, who's it? Uh, Monet got a rope break. Fighting on the apron, Mercedes did double knees from the apron. Did a meteora for near fall, and she was in dis- disbelief when uh, Kari kicked out. And then, uh, you know, as they usually do when the people kick out, um, they exchanged pin attempts. Um, Mercedes did a single leg drop kick. Kyrie did a back fist, tried to do a back fist, and then uh, Mercedes countered with a pin for a two count. Mercedes tried to do the double knees, but then Kyrie countered with a modified figure four. Um, Mercedes uh, escaped with a pin, did put in the bank statement. Um, Kyrie d- made a rope break. <coughs> Kyrie hit a cutlass for a two count. Um, Wheelbarrow, power bomb, axe kick, um, which was not, uh, pretty stiff. Uh, she hit her. I'm telling you right now. Um, Mercedes made an O to Bailey and hit a belly to belly for a near fall. And people tried to Bailey, Bailey. Uh, she tried to hit a suplex, but then Kyrie reversed with a DDT. Um, the people tried to. This is awesome. And you know uh, all that stuff. A one, they did a one-two exchange. Um, Kyrie accidentally cut lust the riff, and Kyrie was pissed. And then she went and beat up Mercedes on the outside. Tried to dive on her, but then Mercedes reversed. She brought out the table, Mercedes, and then Kyrie did a power bomb uh, on the table. They got back in the ring. Um, um, <coughs> sorry, um, Kyrie tried to hit an insane elbow, but then Mercedes blocked it. Um, tr- Mercedes tried to hit a fro- frog splash, but then uh, Kyrie had a knees up. Kyrie put in the uh, back bang statement and she pulled the back, um, tried to, um, you know, pull the back like this as she was doing it. Um, and then uh, Mercedes hit the money maker for the win. And then the Mercedes Monet is the new IWGP Women's Champion. So far, I don't know about you, Ben. This was match of the night. Rass and nine, Logic eight. Well done. Well done. Yes. One of the best women's matches I've seen pretty much this whole year. Well done. It may be it may be women's match of the year candidate. It may be up there. Might be up there. Um let me let me find out the um match time for this because this was relatively a uh you know a very good this was a very good women's match. I have the res- I have the time right here. Twenty six minutes, forty seven seconds. Holy hell, this match was great. Yeah. I gave this match a nine, and Logic, I gave it a seven. But, hey, this was a good match. Very good match. Yeah. And now, for the main event, for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, the champion, Kazuchika Okada versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. The people trying to New Japan, New Japan. Um, they uh, locked up. Okada and put in a wrist lock. Tanahashi reversed with his own wrist lock. They did technical wrestling. Another lock up. A uh, rope break. Uh, the people uh, 
did alternating Okada Tanahashi chance. Uh, Okada put in the shoulder tack, hit a shoulder tackle. Um, Tanahashi did a arm drag takeover into the wrist lock. Then Tanahashi did a crossbody, which was nice. Okada put Tanahashi on the top rope, did a drop kick to the ringside. They fought on the outside. Okada did a DDT. Um, got back in the ring. I uh, did back elbows in the corner. Another DDT for a two count. The people trying to go ace, go ace uh, to cheer on Hiroshi Tanahashi because he's the ace. Um, Tanahashi threw some punches. Okada hit a twisting neck breaker. Uh, he taunted. Um, Okada did. Um, I was like, is Okada heel or is he just arrogant? Probably the latter. Um, Tanahashi made a bit of a comeback, slammed Okada. Oh, um, he did an avalanche ca cannonball for a two count. The people alternated um, Tanahashi and Okada chance. Uh, Tanahashi did a shotgun drop kick. Um, did a leg screw, hyped himself up. Did a high fly flow on high fly full crossbody on Okada on the outside. They replayed that uh, spot. Then they laid down selling. And then Okada did a pre big flapjack. And I was like, oh, when he did that. Uh, Tanahashi did another shotgun to Okada's bad knee. Um, then Okada hit what looked like a muscle buster. Then neck breaker. Um, he held. Um, he held um, a Tanahashi, and then um, slammed him by his neck onto his knee. So I don't know what was that. Um, I, I probably didn't hear it when he did it, uh, but he did that for a two count. Um, Okada slam did a slam. He botched an elbow. Uh, put in a knuckle lock then he did it kneeling down the people trying let's go ace let's go ace to uh, cheer on Tanahashi rope break Tanahashi did a German with a bridge for a two count um, he did a sling blade for a near fall um, did a high fly flow uh, tried to do a second one but Okada had the knees up they had a one-two exchange. Okada did a shotgun. Then he did a drop kick, which was nice. He hit a falcon arrow. Um, tried to do a rainmaker uh, twice. But then Tanahashi blocked him. Um, Tanahashi did a sling blade. Um, tried to do a high fly flow. Uh, Okada did an anti-air drop kick, which was nice. Okada tried to do a rainmaker, but then Tanahashi reversed with a pin and a near fall. Um, Okada did a pump handle slam. He finally hit rainmaker for the win. And I thought this was much better than the uh, Wrestle Kingdom 17 match. He didn't just wait. He was kind of su super Cena in the last match um, that we reviewed. You know, he kept hitting rainmakers on Jay White. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of annoying, uh, but uh, yeah, he did a lot of other moves too, and really proved that he's one of the really good right. wrestlers in the world. And he, of course, retained the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Okara cut a promo in English, and he spoke pretty good English. Um, he said, he "How how was he New did. Japan tonight?" Great. And of course, um, they said it was great. Um, uh, he invited, I think, Tanahashi. He said Tanasan to be tag partners. And then he thanked the fans. Then Mercedes Monet came out. Um, he also thanked the fans. And he, she also wanted to team up with Okada, which is pretty interesting. That's quite interesting that they would team up. So, yeah, they just need to find some other mixed tag team if they do become a tag team. And then, yeah, they posed with each other. They showed off their belts. Then they left. They left. Um, they left. Um, for this match, I gave Wrestling a 9 and Logic an 8. Yeah, this was a... They went out left. They went out what? Match. 
This was a good main event. Yeah, this was a very good main event. Both main events were very good matches. Um, and yeah, I really put the lid on uh, the stuff. And, you know, yeah, th th that was great. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, and yeah, um, for this man, for this show, I gave Rasson. Uh, matter of fact, I'll give it seven and a half, and Logic a seven. Um, what did you think, Ben, about this match and then Jump. the show? Uh, I thought about this match. I gave this match a nine, and Logic, I gave it a, I gave it a, I gave it an eight. I gave it an eight because the finisher actually ended the match, and yeah. it wasn't three or four finishers in the main event. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, this was a very good main event. Now, um, about the show, this was a very good show. Um, I think New Japan, they thrive more on smaller crowds rather than the big crowds because, you know, when they were in the Tokyo Dome, the Tokyo Dome crowd was very quiet. But when they were in uh, San Jose tonight, um, they, they they cheered a lot for the, for everybody. They, yeah. they were a very raucous crowd in San yeah. Jose. And, yeah. Uh, it was a very, it was a very good crowd. Um, for all of the matches, for those of you who need, who want to watch this show, uh, I do recommend some. Yeah, you know, I recommend the double main events, which are great. Yeah, they're you know they're good in their own right. I also recommend the uh, Motor City Machine Guns match, which was actually a very good match, a sleeper match in my honest opinion, an underrated match on the show. And then Zack Saber Jr. versus Clark Connors. That's the only, that's, those are the matches I would recommend to all of you. But other than that, a very good show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a very good show. And, I, and a very good review, I think. Probably one of our best reviews in a while. Um, I enjoyed recording this. And yeah, um, uh, well, I guess. Yeah, this is, the, this is the end of our review. But before yeah. we go... Um, I got something I got to say. What? We got to reveal the worst wrestler of the month. Oh. We got to do it. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it now. Here are the nominees at this time. Elias. Yeah. At Cap Moss. Omos. Omos. F. Jarrett. F. Jarrett and Orange Cassidy. All of your nominees. Once again, let me repeat that again. Elias, Mad Cat Moss, F. Jarrett, Orange Cassidy, and the fifth guy is I think Omos. Dan Omos. Omos. Close enough. The winner of the Get Off My TV Worst Wrestler of the Month. Drum roll, please. And your winner is Jeff fucking Jared. Jeff Jared stinks. Get him off my fucking TV. <laughs> that is your worst wrestler of the month for February. And this will be a, uh, a reoccurring thing, especially a month. This is a monthly thing, everybody. This won't be a weekly thing. By the way, I got to rant really fast here. Oh. I'm going to talk about that. Oh. <laughs> and how's in an orange fucking Cassidy got a fucking title shot before the Lucha Bros, Top Flight, the Young Bucks, and FTR. Why? The fuck was this? Who books this garbage? I don't know what Tony Khan is doing with Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy. You, uh, Tony Khan, let me remind you of something. Orange Cassidy has, Orange Cassidy defended the belt against Big Bill. Big Bill couldn't even beat a fucking guy who is five foot eleven. Big Bill is seven foot tall. He lost to a goddamn roll up by Orange Cassidy. And then on the same exact show in the main event, he wins a tag team battle royale. Why? The fuck was this? Tony Khan, bro, what are you doing? I don't know if you phoned in AEW Dynamite on Wednesday. I don't know what are you doing, bro. I mean, the only good thing on Dynamite was Powerhouse Hobbs winning the Face of the Revolution ladder match. That was it. And MJF's promo. And that was about it. Other than that, 
Why the fuck was Denhausen and Orton Cassidy on this fucking piece of shit AEW Dynamite getting a fucking tag team title shot with the guns, the acclaimed, and fucking Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal? Why? Fuck, what's this decision? Who made this shit? Who wrote this shit? And who wrote this garbage? This shit sucks. This is why we are not watching that match at Revolution. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I hope, I know all of you are gonna pay your $50, or you know, $50, 50 pounds, 50 euros, whatever. The fact of the matter is, do not watch this four man tag team match, four way, this four tag team match. Do not watch that match at Revolution. Whoever watches that match, you need, you need to be, you need to be very, very just, just, just stop watching wrestling. Because you don't know wrestling at this point. The Guns, the Acclaim, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal, and the fucking Danhausen and Orange Cassidy. Danhausen got a fucking title shot before Nick Jackson and Matt Jackson. For what? Get Danhausen off my fucking television. He sucks. Damn. <laughs> that show. That show was terrible. Horrible oh show. <laughs> Ben went on a whole soliloquy there. Oh my gosh. Fuck, fuck Orange Cassidy. Fuck Stephon Smith, who was not on this show. Thank God he was not on this show. I would have I would have tore him a new one, Stephon Smith. Jesus Christ. Anyway, everybody, that's your that's your review. That's for yeah. Battle and Develop. Yeah. I've said enough. I've said my piece. Yeah. Thank you for for listening to this episode and we will be back next week for AEW Revolution. Um we will review that and um uh in the meantime you guys can listen to certified bangers and um you can listen to the roundup which I will uh, upload soon. Um hopefully if Ben can just send me the voice clips again they probably expired by now um so uh yeah uh be on the lookout for that um this coming episode of certified bangers will be a special hosted episode of certified bangers and then the following week is the wonderful women of certified bangers three because it is women's day um i think this coming Wednesday, Thursday, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, Wednesday is a women's day. Um, I think it's Thursday. No, Friday is the 10th. Um, Friday, women's day is on the 8th of March. So Friday the 10th, Thursday the 9th, Wednesday the 8th. So yeah, uh, it'll be on this Wednesday, International Women's Day. And we will have a special celebration of that on Certified Bangers. And uh, be on the lookout for that. And then subsequently, uh, we will do our AEW Revolution review. Uh, maybe Ben remind. Uh, uh, um, the, if the special <laughs> guest host, <laughs> if the special guest host, can, I mean uh, Ben, remind the special guest host to remind the people um, of this. Um, schedule of life's opening radio <laughs> um uh, yeah uh, yeah i'll uh, do that in a second <laughs> yeah um, uh, yes we have the roundups we got certified bangers coming out um you know, tomorrow Sundays, whatever sunday. sunday or monday that's enough um we have that we have we have um aw revolution we got uh wrestlemania and then we got mysteries of life yeah I have no idea. I have no idea what's that. Uh, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will be back next time. Um, we will be back for, I believe, Revolution next week. And But until then, on behalf of Josh Jenkins, this is Habinator and Ben Charles. Signing up. Fuck Juice Robinson. <laughs>